In whack-a-mole type games, these types of buttons that come up and then disappear over time, they have a time interval. So you'll see about 10 of them or five of them in a row, but they appear at random locations and they appear for random amounts of time. Let's create random potato buttons and randomize the rotation. To do that, we need to get a set of random numbers. Getting random numbers from math.random is not so bad. If you wanna get a random number, you just say random number based on a range of what your random number is, multiplied by random, which gives you percentage of a randomness between zero and one times whatever your range is. The challenge with that though, is that we need to get randomness between numbers. So for example, we want our potatoes to appear anywhere on this particular black area right here. So it's not just a randomness between an X of zero and 800, but also between a Y of zero and 600. Not only that, but even if we shrink the potato's size, we still don't want it to appear kind of on the edge. It's kind of unfair. It's not really fun. And the user can't over click over there. You actually want it in the rectangle inside of here. So we need a random X between actually 100 and 700 or whatever the potato's width is. And the same thing for the Y, it needs to be about 100 to 500. So kind of in this inner rectangle is where it's okay for those to appear. So we need a random number and a range. So let's get rid of this and create a range randomness function. So it's a random number from range. Give it a start and an end. And based on a range, it's really the end minus the start. So if you want to get a range of 40% to 60%, if you minus 40 from 60, the difference is 20. So that's the randomness range that you have is that 20. It's anywhere from 20 to 40. Whatever that range is, it's dynamic. It always assumes that the end is larger than the start. Negative numbers, that kind of strange. We're not going to verify any of that now. We're just going to assume we're going to paste in good parameters for that. The randomness comes in when you multiply it times the range. So that gives you the actual random number. Then you just return that plus whatever your start value is. That gives you a random number from a range. If we want to get our randomness, which is an X value, for example, so we log out a 100 to 700 and log that guy out, you'll see that we get 450. And we can keep reloading this and get a different number each time, 600, 666, 490, 300. Now we have to create random buttons. The buttons themselves are not really what we're interested in. What we're interested in is these properties up here. The randomness on the X, Y, rotation, and even the scale. So let's generate those properties. We'll say get random potato button properties. Quite the method name. The only thing that's not dynamic is the callback. Everybody that clicks on a button is gonna want the same callback. So that's the only thing that's not random. We get a random X from a random number from range, which is, let's make it a little bit further to the right. We'll say 300 to 700. And a random Y, which is a random number from 100 to 300, given the fact that these are vertical is not as large. And then a random rotation, a random rotation, rotation, zero to 360 degrees, not radians. And scale, we won't, we won't use, but I'll just get, calculate it anyway. Random number from range for scale is 0 0.8 to 1.2. So that's anywhere from 80% the size of the potato to 120%. Everything else about this, these properties that we need to generate are the same that we've seen before. So we already know the first four properties are gonna be static every single time. The same image, the same MP3, the same AUG, and the same callback that you pass in. Everything else is random except for the scale, I'll explain later why. Random Y, the rotation, and then the random rotation. The scale, I'm just gonna hard code 20% since we have a big potato right now. Then we can just return this guy back. Potato, potato button props. Now we have a way to get random potato properties that we can use to create buttons. Let's go ahead and create at least five random things. And the way you create five random anything in JavaScript is the array constructor. It takes in a parameter for the array length. Now what's funny about it is that you can create an array, so we'll say new array of five, but it's actually five nothings. So it creates an array with five nothings. But since nothing is kind of something in JavaScript, it's actually an array of five things. So that's great, but we don't actually need an array of nothing. What we need is an array of something else. So let's start it out with an array of nothings, and then we'll get out something different. The item, which we know is nothing, we don't really even care. So we're not gonna put a callback for now, and we'll just get a, a random thing of 
random potato properties. This array is five nothings. It'll run this function five times and change what's in that position in the array. Array of five nothings after this thing is completely done, we'll now have five random potato properties. So let's log this out, go back to our browser. Now we have five potato button props. We can use these properties to build random buttons. If we scroll up just a tad, open one or two, you can see that the rotation is different. It's seven here and 109 here. And the X is 686 down here, it's 448. We've got enough randomness now where we can create buttons from these things. So that, ladies and gentlemen, is how you generate randomness from a range, not just using random for a particular number, but an actual range of random numbers. Basically ensure it's within that range. And if you wanted to, you could use Lodash's clamp method to ensure that it is in fact always in that range. Then you can generate the actual properties that are needed to create that. Using the array constructor, we can pre-populate an array with a set of values, which start as nothing, but that's okay because using math, we can map it to whatever we want. So it's a very quick way to get a bunch of things using pre-built random functions to get a bunch of random things.